Today we'll be discussing the uh, custom of breaking a dish following the signing and reading of the Tanayim document by weddings. Before we begin, as always, it should not be relied upon for halachic psak and a rub should be consulted. The custom is to have a Tanayim document by weddings. The Tanayim document is a document that stipulates uh, the setting of the date. It has other monetary uh, prenuptial agreements. The custom amongst many Hasidim is to sign the Tanayim months before when the couple gets engaged. But the classic custom amongst most Ashkenazim is they sign the Tanayim right before the Chuppah by the Chassan's Tish. They sign the Tanayim. And again, the Tanayim is, it sort of just uh, states that the Chassan and Kala will show up to the wedding and has guarantors on that. Following the reading of the Tanayim, we're not going to get involved in the halachas of the Tanayim document, but following the reading of the Tanayim, it's customary to break a, a, a china dish. So I want to talk about that custom today. Maybe in another share we'll discuss the custom of breaking a dish under the chuppah, but this is after the Tanayim. So it's customary to break a dish after the Tanayim are read. That custom can be found in the Sefer Minhagi Vermiza, the Minhagim of the Worms, and Ois Reish Chavzayin, and it's also brought down in the Primigadim, Simitav Kof Samach, Mishpat Zayzav, Sifkat and Dalit. The Mishabur explains that the dish is broken in order to remember the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, that even at the time where we were very happy, right before the Chuppah, we still remember the Chorban. It's a sign of, uh, it's a Zeichel Chorban. This is the Mishabur and Simitav Kof Samach Sifkat and Tes. So interestingly enough, the, uh, because this is, the whole custom is in order to remember the Chorban, the Stei Chemed was actually against, uh, was unhappy about something that happens. I don't know if you notice, they, the, the, they break the dish, and then everyone yells Mazel Tov. So Stei was not happy with that. He said the custom was supposed to instill sadness over the loss of the Beis HaMikdash, and instead, it becomes a source of happiness and joy. And the Stei goes so far as to say that if he had the ability, he would dismiss the whole custom entirely. It bothered him so much that he, he said, Yashicheli Abatlana, that if I had the ability, I would get rid of the whole thing. Rav Yosef Zatzal writes that although he does not agree with uh, shouting Mazel Tov, he, he says it's not in the spirit of the Takana, but he said he would not dismiss the custom. He says that it would be preferred for the Chassan to say the words in Meshkachech Yushalayim Tishkach Yimini follow the breaking of the dish. To reinstate sadness into the ceremony, he feels that it's not going to yell Mazel Tov, but he said he would, he would, uh, he would add that line that can be found in Yabiyah Oymer Chilag Dalet of Ezra Simon Tess. Again, so, but Lamaisa, practically, people yell Mazel Tov. I guess the understanding is they're not yelling Mazel Tov over breaking of the dish. They're yelling Mazel Tov because they're happy that the process is beginning, I guess. The Shulchan Eizer writes that a china dish is supposed to be used, not glass. The reason is because glass, when it's broken, it could be melted down and reformed. China cannot be done that way. So it's to show the couple that once this, you know, the Tanayim usually was done at the time of the engagement, so it's trying to show the Chassan and Kala the, uh, the gravity of breaking engagement, that if you break it, it's like breaking a China dish, it can never be reformed. You know, they say from the name of the Vilna Gain that um, it's better to write a get than to break a Tanayim, uh, meaning... That's why some people were afraid to write Tanayim, but the Tanayim is, obligates the couple to get married, and he used to say that it's better to write a get, it's better to get divorced, meaning get married and then get divorced, than to break an engagement. That's what they say, There's, it's brought down in the Sefer Shari Rachamim, brought down in the Sefer Shulchan Ezer, Simon Beis, Sifkat and Chaf. Rav Hankin also writes that he heard this from the girl. I don't know practically if we would say such a thing, because getting married and getting divorced is obviously very traumatic, but there is such a concept that breaking in, an engagement is a very grave thing, so therefore you break a dish, a china dish, to show you that just just like you can't reform this dish, breaking an engagement is sort of irreparable, that it's going to cause damage that can never be, re, uh, never can be undone. The Primagodim writes that you should break a dish that's already slightly broken. The reason for that is he holds that this minimizes the prohibition of baltashchis. Baltashchis forbids us from destroying needlessly anything of value, including dishes, right? You can't just break something that's called baltashchis. So says the prima Godim, you know, you're breaking a dish, that's baltashchis. Therefore, you might as well break a dish that's already slightly broken. The 
Kitzur Shulchan Aruch also says this. The Kitzur Shulchan Aruch in Simen Kaf Chavav Sif Beis also says that you should take a dish that's already slightly broken. However, the Sefer Lekute Marich writes that the custom in his day was to break a complete dish. I also uh, I, ha- I have a psak. I have a written psak from Rabbi Noach Isaac Goldbaum Shlita that he also felt that this is the custom and this should be the right thing to do. The understanding behind their opinion is. It's not a problem about tashchis if you if you have a reason for it. Breaking a dish in order to instill a little sadness, a little uh, reminder of the Beis Hamikdash, the loss of the Beis Hamikdash, that's enough of a purpose that it's not going to constitute baltashchis. Baltashchis is breaking something needlessly. You know, every time someone dies, you rip kriya. That's not baltashchis. That's necessary for mourning. So this is necessary to remember the loss of the Beis HaMikdash. It's not a problem about Tashchis. So therefore, there's no reason to take a broken, uh, a broken dish. And that's why Rabbi Oben told me that it's uh, better to take a complete dish. Now, that's a little bit more of the uh, background as to following the breaking of the dish. The question is, who breaks the dish? Who breaks the, 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 the dish by the Tanoim? There are various customs. The most common custom is the dish is broken by the mothers of the chasan and the mothers of the kala. Now, the reason for this, I saw that the Shulchan Ezer says, you know, under the chuppah, the one who breaks the dish is the chasan. By the tenayim, the most common custom is for others to break the dish, the mothers of the chasan and the kala. So he says, the reason is, by the chuppah, the chasen is so happy, it's such a tremendous happiness, he has to break the dish himself to, in order to instill a little sadness, a little bit of, of, of reverence. By the tenayim, the chuppah hasn't happened yet, so you're not at a state of overwhelming joy, and therefore other people can break the dish. Now that doesn't explain, that just explains why the chasen is not the one who breaks it. It doesn't explain why the chasen, why the chasen's mother and the kala's mother are the ones who break it, but that's, that's what he said. Uh, the Skver Hasidim, the Neta Gavriel, I believe, says this. Um, the Neta Gavriel says that the custom among Skver Hasidim is that the Chasan, his father and father in law, break one dish, and the Kala, the Kala's mother, and the Kala's mother in law break another dish. Some have the custom, the Sefer Matamim, Ere Chasan, Ois Hey, brings down that some have the custom for the dish to be broken by the fathers of the Chasan and Kala. Belzer Hasidim have the custom that one dish is broken by the fathers of the Chassan and Kala, and afterwards the mothers of the Chassan and Kala break a second dish. So these are just different various customs. Again, the most common custom amongst Ashkenazim is for the mother of the Chassan and the mother of the Kala to break the dish. Now, this is all, this whole ceremony is under the notion that you break a dish. Svardim, many Svardim do not have the custom to break a dish at the Tanayim. It's brought down in the Sefer Nesun Kilchasan, Daflamid Hay, that the overwhelming majority of Svardim do not have such a custom, and therefore all of this is not relevant for Svardim at all. Um, any questions can be sent to avizakatinsky at gmail.com, A V I Z A K U T I N S K Y at gmail.com.